What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to our 50 subscriber special where we're reading In Every Generation by Ken Dare Blake. Chapter 34 A Tomb Full of Bloodsuckers. Inside the mansion was deserted. Since it was daylight, the vampires had all bunkered down in the catacombs. It didn't take Sigmund long to set up a short, reflective line of mirrors from an eastward-facing window down to the opening of the catacombs. He would stay at the top and direct the sunlight down. Someone else would need to operate the mirror at the bottom. They should be able to reflect it left and right, up and down, but it won't have much range, as far as burning them is concerned. The scattered light should still give you something to go by, though. Maybe not far enough to reach the Queen's chamber. Fighting the Countess in the dark, only a few hours after she nearly killed me in a fully lit space? Frankie nodded once. Sounds smart, she turned to Jake. I need you at the mirror. What? No way. You're not at a hundred percent. I don't want to worry about you. Just stay at the mirror and get and use your lacrosse reflexes to burn the vampires with reflected sunlight. And back up Sigmund if you get if any get past us. You'll need to keep them off him. He glanced at the half sage demon and nodded, then he pushed Frankie affectionately. But if you need me, shout a code word and I'll come running. What's the code word? How about Jake? Get your dumb ass over here. Great. It'll be second nature. She studied his face a moment and was surprised by how well she knew it. The curve of his jaw and the slight crook in the bridge of his nose, the way his eyes wrinkled at the corner when he smiled. I'm sorry I let you get bit. Me too. Don't let it happen again. I just got all this new blood like eight hours ago. She turned to Haley, who already had a steak in one hand and an open bottle of holy water in the other. Oh shoot, Haley said. Hang on. I forgot something in the trunk. She turned and ran out of the mansion. Grimlock stepped up to the ladder leading down. They wouldn't have much time when they hit the bottom. Down the opening, Frankie could see only a five-foot circle of light against the dirt floor. Five by five, she murmured. Jake and Sigmund would need to be fast with the mirrors. Go ahead, Grimlock said. I can see in the dark. And then the demon dropped down into the hole, ignoring the ladder completely. Can that guy get any cooler? Jake asked. Okay, I'm back. Haley ran up and, hand and held out Frankie's sparring stick. One end had been sharpened to a lethal point. Nighttime whittling, she said. Now you have a sparring stick. Frankie spun it in her hands. She felt the tip, perfectly carved. Duh, said Haley. Haley, Frankie stopped. She felt bad not telling her about the call from Xander, but it wasn't the kind of news she needed to hear right before descending into a nest. Thank you for staying in Sunnydale. Let's go kill some vampires. They climbed down the hole, and when Jake hit the bottom, he called up the Sigmund, and they swirled their mirrors. It took a minute, but they got in sync and produced a beam of relatively bright sunlight, just in time to dust the fledgling vampire who'd been waiting in the shadows. Past the first one, Frankie counted five more clawing at the path, fangs bared and vampiric faces on display. Three of them were in semi-formal wear, promised dancers who'd been turned. Oh damn, she whispered, but there was nothing they could do for them now. After the first vampire caught fire from Jake's sunbeam, the others scattered. Grimlock returned from further down the tunnel and caught two around the neck. He pulled their heads clean off and they collapsed into dust. The other two, both newly turned girls in blue dresses, were so put off by that that they ran back at Frankie and Haley, who jumped out of the way so Jake could take them out with the light from the mirror. Sig, this works pretty well, Jake called up. But it won't take us far. Frankie looked down the dark corridor. She could just make out burial holes dug in the walls on both sides. A few had feet sticking out of them, heavy sleeping vamps, or corpses they had yet to rise. Look at these sleeping conditions, Haley said. I'm claustrophobic just looking at them. They remind me of those capsule hotels in Japan. She walked up to one that had feet and splashed some holy water onto the legs. They started to smoke, and the vampire started to scream. When he wriggled out of his sleeping hole, Haley staked him cleanly through the chest. Takes them some time to get out. That helps. Further into the catacombs, the path opened up on a larger chamber. Already, there were, they were out of range of Jake's sunbeam, and it was harder and harder to see in the light cast from it. How long till we find the Countess? Not much further, said Grimlock. Just through there. You'll never reach the Countess. Frankie turned just in time to see Grimlock be grabbed from behind by a burly set of arms and dragged away into the darkness. Grim! 
She jumped forward half a step, then she stopped as six pairs of yellow eyes emerged from the shadows, led by a tall, handsome vampire in a black suit. Hey, she said, isn't that the vampire formerly known as track star Eric Sullivan? He didn't reply. The vampires attacked, and Frankie spun her sparring stick and went to work, with the pointy end. She spun and struck with the sparring stick, knocking two vampires back with the blunt end, only to twirl it like a baton and stake them with the sharp side half a second later. She used it to trip a third and reverse kicked a fourth off balance. She felt fast and focused, but none of these fledglings were the Countess. Frankie turned as Haley doused the fifth vampire with holy water. It was easy enough to stake when it was steaming and clawing at its face. She looked around the chamber, all that remained of the vampire from her first patrol in the graveyard, UC Sunnydale. You go, Haley said. I've got this one. Are you sure? I'm sure. Trust me. Frankie nodded. Use Jake's code word if you get into trouble, she said, and ran past the vampire into the darkness. Haley repositioned her grip on the stake. You see Sunnydale, she said, the one that got away. You, he said, I remember you from the cemetery. Where's your squirt gun full of holy water? Haley narrowed her eyes. They circled each other and snarled. His snarls were better than hers, but at least the chamber was no open field. Those speedy legs of his would be less of an advantage this time around. Haley darted forward, and the vampire grabbed her and threw her against a wall. It hurt, nearly knocking the wind from her lungs, but she forced herself up and went straight back in, slashing with the stake. She focused on attacking and landed a good kick to his midsection. It didn't move him like a slayer's would, but it wasn't bad. Another drove him back further, and another got him nearly pinned to the wall. There, and there'd be nothing left to do but drive the stake home. No running this time, she said. He boosted a foot off the wall and vaulted himself over her head. I also used to do pole vault. He punched her in the jaw. She briefly saw stars and felt him lift her over his head. End shot, Putty said, and threw her across the chamber. She landed hard, rolling, and felt the tip of her stake press dangerously into her own ribs. She grunted as she kicked, as he kicked her in the side, and she lay on her stomach, panting. It was too soon to feel it, but her whole body was going to hurt later, if she lived. You know, I ought to thank you, he said. I forgot how much... I used to love track practice. She tried to catch her breath, listening to him pace and crack his knuckles. I was never very good at the long jump, but maybe now. He planted both his feet and leapt, ready to land on her back with his whole weight. Haley rolled out of the way and grabbed his ankles when they hit the ground. She yanked them out from under him and propelled herself up to drive her stake through his undead heart. Will you cool it with the track stuff, she shouted as his dust... as at his dust, then she collapsed. God, I hate sports. Frankie ran long after she had outrun the reach of the light, following the sounds of Grimlock fighting with his unseen assailant, who she suspected was the tall vampire they'd seen the first night of the, at the Countess's side. Her right-hand man, as it were, and probably her strongest sh soldier. She took a slow breath and tried to calm the beating of her heart. Grimlock was a millennia old demon who would be able to handle one vampire or he usually would, when he didn't have a door to his beating heart standing wide open in his chest. She took another step, listening to the scrape of her shoe against the dirt. She needed to be able to see. The dark was too total to fight in, and she and Spike hadn't done any training while blindfolded. From somewhere ahead, Grimlock bellowed, and Frankie darted forwards and ran straight into a wall. This isn't going to work. Use your magic, she could almost hear Jake say. It was probably a dumb idea. Upstairs in the mansion, Sigmund's stomach probably started rumbling the minute she thought of it. Her mom had never told her, and Frankie didn't think she understood the scale anyway, but her witchcraft proficiency level had to be about two. Mom, she whispered, lend me a little juice. She concentrated, breathed slow. When doubt crept in, she forced it out, and soon enough she felt the magic rising in her blood, bubbling in her chest like a warm cauldron. Fiat Lux. The chamber filled with a soft reddish light an odd, unnatural light, as it seemed to have no source itself. But at least she could see, and what she saw immediately was that she was standing in the Queen's chamber, and that it was empty, except for the giant horse mural on the wall, which she had to admit was kind of nice. Where's the Countess? she asked. Gone. Grimlock shoved a vampire through the chamber's doorway so hard that he bounced off the crate full of dirt. It was a strange thing to have in a sleeping chamber, but it must have been special dirt, because the crate that held it had been draped with silver silk. I know this one, Frankie said, and pointed at it. 
This is the way Dracula traveled, all safe and tucked in the dirt of his homeland. I always heard that it didn't do any good. It does plenty of good. The vampire got up off the floor and brushed daintily at the knees of his pants. Surprisingly daintily, considering his size, he was as tall as Grimlock, and more broad-shouldered, much more muscular. But there he stood, with a bloodied lip and blackened eyes, while Grimlock remained alive, heart intact. I heard you bellow, said Frankie. I thought you were in trouble. Victory bellow, he said. Never liked this guy. Haley ran into the chamber, stake raised, then quickly lowered it when she saw them. You see Sunnydale is dust. She looked around the chamber. Nice light, she nodded to the wall. Big horse. Where's the Countess? That's what we're about to find out. Frankie struck the vampire hard in the chest with the blunt end of her sparring stick. With one end sharpened to a point, it barely looked like a sparring stick anymore, just a very long, large stake. She aimed the pointy end at the vampire's heart. You're too late, he said. She's already gone up. Gone up, Frankie asked. Gone up where? To kill your watcher. Spike? He's safe, said Haley. He's at the library, which by now is in broad daylight. The vampire laughed. Grimlock lifted him up and shoved him against the wall. What's so funny, Frankie asked. You think the daylight will help your watcher? You think it will keep him safe? His icy eyes enjoyed only torment, and had seen enough of it over the years to have actually grown bored. But when he looked at Frankie, his eyes twinkled. Virgin's blood. Drink enough of it, and it installs all sorts of little perks. Frankie realized what he meant. She turned back the way they'd come. Grab him, she ran out of the chamber. Throw a blanket over him and take him with us in case we need to trade. We have to get to Spike. It had already taken too long. The Countess was going to find him. She was going to get him. Frankie, Haley ran, at, ran after her, and Grimlock, too, dragging the vampire further behind. What's going on? Spike's at the library. He's safe. No, he's not, Frankie said, as she hurried past the burial chambers to Jake and Sigmund at the mirrors. The Countess is a friggin' daywalker. The Countess liked the new car. It was small and fast and sporty, black like her old horse, Lavia, and easy to drive in the hit in heels. She'd changed out of her gold dress, which was ruined, stained and ripped, with a nasty hole right over the heart, and had and into something a little bit more comfortable, a cream pantsuit over a peach blouse. She could have been on her way to a society lunch luncheon in that suit. She could have been a senator, but she was only going to kill a vampire. Normally, she didn't like to kill vampires. They were her kin. Lesser than she was, certainly, but still her kin. She tended to look upon them as her children, even the ones that she didn't sire. Everyone, everyone her watered-down, blood-sucking kin. But this was different. This one was a watcher. He had a soul. His very existence made her cold cold with rage. She would have killed him eventually anyways. The little slayer had merely moved it up on the calendar. She parked the car in the lot of New Sunnydale High School and stepped out. The library wouldn't be hard to find. The books had a particular smell, and this library was full of old and particularly pungent volumes. She let her nose lead the way keeping to the outdoor paths for as long as she could before going inside. The day was so fresh and bright. Artificial light was a wonder, but nothing really compared to the sun. It had been so long since she'd been strong enough to dare it. When she reached the doors of the library, she almost knocked. The school was so clean and quiet on a Sunday morning that to do anything else seemed quite impolite. But then she remembered what awaited her inside, and she blew the doors off their hinges instead with one fierce kick. The vampire jumped up from the table where he'd sat, surrounded by open books and a computer with a bright white screen. Modern humans, staring at those things, was bound to make them blind. William the Bloody. Countess. He looked terrible, nearly too bleary-eyed to even be surprised, but he still backed up. Smart boy. I know I've been away for a while, she said, but you still don't look like a librarian to me. He was dressed in all black, a black t-shirt, black jeans, big black boots. Well, it's Sunday. Usually I'm in tweed. It's just bloody itches. He backed up again. How'd you find me? Come through the tunnels? I came across the front lawn. She leapt up to him, up over the tables, and grabbed him by the throat. Why don't you try it? She held him up for a moment, enjoying his feeble kicks and the way he gurgled and flopped like a caught fish. Then she threw him hard, right through the large glass door doors and into the sunlight. It was over too soon. 
She instantly regretted not torturing him a little. The muscle in her arm was still springy with unused adrenaline, but what was done was done. She waited for the screaming to start, and the smoke, and the delicious, greasy-smelling flames. That would have to be satisfaction enough. Except the vampire didn't burn. Interesting. She followed him out the window, and snagged him by the back of his collar when he tried to run. You're not on fire, she said. So what? You're not either, he replied. Is it the soul? She sniffed at his skin. He didn't smell of good blood, of good feeding. Who knows how long it had been since he'd had a decent meal from a human source, so he certainly hadn't been drinking virgins. Yeah, it's the soul. Protects me. Sucks to be you. He put on a decent show, nostrils flaring, indignant over his obvious fear, but she knew a lie when she heard one. She turned him right and left, inspecting him for charms or protective marks. She scanned the sky and saw nothing but the bright and normally blistering sun. Except there. She narrowed her eyes as she looked across the grounds of the school. There at the edge, there was a disturbance in the air, a slight shimmer as if from a border of magic. The witch, she said. She enchanted the school. Very, very clever. Let's you have the run of the place to help keep her slayer child. Yet keeps you set in one spot. Doesn't let you fully off your leash. I don't need a leash, the upstart vampire twisted in her grip and drove his elbow into her eye, hard enough to make her drop him, but only for a second. He kicked and punched, and she didn't bother dodging, but she did squeeze his throat when his blows made her dizzy. She wanted to tear his head clean off, but she'd come with a plan, and she'd never been one to deviate. You're gonna burn, she said, and pointed a manicured finger at him. And your little witch friend, all your w little witch friend bought you was a few hundred yards. And that's the end of chapter 34. I'll see you in the next part. Until then, have fun, guys.